Do you want electronic fuel injection on your Ford 302? Well, here's how. Man, guys, thank you so much for uh, sticking around. Thank you so much for watching. Today, what I am gonna be working on is installing the Fitech Go Street EFI 4, 600 horsepower on my 1975 Ford Bronco. I got this thing from uh, Tom's Bronco Parts and uh, the guys up there are super awesome. Um, uh, Garrett accidentally accidentally sent me two of these um, so I mean hey right like when a vendor sends you a bonus one uh, you should keep it right uh, no I will I'll send that back Garrett I promise uh, I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can get yourself one of them let me just start right here and say look I know there are a lot of guys out there who are like carburetor fanatics like you love tuning a carburetor it brings you no greater joy i am not one of those people why would i not a carburetor lover go with the efi system uh because it's awesome you know regularly i would drive my bronco to work and i would tune it in the morning and then on my way home it would run like crap but for me tuning my own carburetor versus this, I'm gonna see a big horsepower gain. Also, you're gonna get a better fuel air ratio mixture. So it's super easy to install. It's self-learning, so it's always learning and growing and getting smarter and better. Like it's gonna turn into the Terminator, it's the T2000. Pretty soon it's gonna murder me because it realizes that I'm a terrible driver. It monitors uh, a, a crap ton of stuff. couple things to take note of if you are going to do this uh, install as well. If you're like me and you have the original 302 motor, you're going to have to upgrade to a dual plane or even a quad plane. I don't know if that's a real thing or not. Uh, the one with the four holes at the top. I ended up going with the dual plane because it works with the uh, Fitech system and it wasn't too expensive link below on that one but also i did an install video on that so uh you also need to get a new distributor with this because you need one that has a two wire pickup the msd pro billet is what they recommend it's like 300 bucks it's pretty expensive but the cool thing is you don't need the cdi box with it so that like CDI box, it's like 600 bucks, um, but you don't need it because the Fitech will actually run your distributor. You, you could do this and just keep, uh, I don't know if you can keep your stock distributor or not, but you don't have to get a new distributor. I wanted to because I got the EFI 4 600 horsepower and uh, and so I got a new distributor so it would control my timing as well. So the, f the first thing that I did was I actually removed everything hooked up to my carburetor, uh, the fuel line, the, all the vacuum lines and removed the carburetor itself. And then I mocked up what the Fitech would look like uh, on the manifold and started to get an idea for how all the wires would be routed and what wires don't I need anymore I just installed the painless wiring harness I wanted to make sure that I knew what wires I wouldn't need anymore and uh, what wires I would need to run new because I, I had to run a couple new wires uh, if you are doing this and have uh, the painless wiring harness as well here are the wires that I didn't need I have my list here the blue number 900 uh, wire that goes from the DuraSpark to the ballast resistor if you're running a ballast resistor. The gray and yellow number 999 wire that goes from the coil to the DuraSpark. And again, I had a DuraSpark ignition, you may not. And then the three wires that went from the DuraSpark ignition module 
to the distributor. So those were the ones that uh, I actually removed. Also, uh, just so you know, one of the things that I did was just kind of kept track of how long it took me to install, to remove my carburetor, put on the, the Phytec and route all the wires, get all the wiring right. Um, that took me about four hours. And then, man, to install the throttle body, I mean, it's like 30 minutes tops. To drill the O2 sensor, uh, it took me about an hour um, to get that, to do it right, to figure out the placement of it, to do all that. The final wiring hookup of everything only took me about 30 minutes because I spent all that time at the beginning making sure that I knew what wires that I needed and all that stuff. So all in all, uh, this, should, this should take you less than four or five hours. It took me way longer because I had to troubleshoot forever to figure out what was going on. My timing was way off and I kept getting it off. I bought a brand new MSD distributor and it came with a bad magnetic pickup. And then I figured out that I put the wrong wire to, uh, as the power source for the Phytec, I hooked the wrong wire up. All in all, it could take you only like four hours but if you're like me, you're gonna make mistakes along the way. So go ahead and plan, you know, a, a couple, you know, weeks, months. <laughs> um, no, uh, it won't take that long, but um, it, it did take a little bit troubleshooting all my mistakes as I made them. All right, so for the installation, the first thing that you wanna install is the oxygen sensor. What you wanna do is drill a 7 8 inch hole. You can put this on either side of your exhaust. I chose to put it on the driver's side, uh, but you wanna make sure that it is before the catalytic converter, and you don't wanna put this on a bend. When you drill the hole, you wanna make sure that it's at least 10 degrees above horizontal and then try to clean up as much of the metal shavings as you can. I, I just kind of vacuumed it out and hit it with a hammer, tried to pop stuff up. Then what you wanna do is clamp the sensor on. Now for me, where I put this, uh, my exhaust was actually a lot smaller than the clamps that Phytec uh, provided. So I had to buy some smaller clamps uh, to get it on there. And when you're clamping this on, make sure that you take your time doing it and just go back and forth. Don't clamp down one side completely because then that will leave the other side open for possible air leaks. Then if you haven't already, uh, remove your carburetor, remove the throttle linkage, the fuel lines, the vacuum lines, remove all that stuff. So uh, you wanna figure out at this point what vacuum ports you're going to need and you're gonna use. Uh, Phytec does a good job of uh, kind of breaking them down, um, what goes where and all that good stuff, but this is wrong. They stole one of the vacuum ports, a very important one, one that I was gonna use for I don't know, it was gonna be important. They're using it uh, to run it back into the system. So um, I kinda had to figure that out. I ended up running uh, one of the vacuum lines off the intake manifold and it was fine. And then cover up the ones that you're not gonna use because otherwise you're gonna forget about them. Um, and you're going to start this and it's gonna run like crap. Then what you wanna do is put the gasket for the throttle body on the manifold and then put that beautiful throttle body on your manifold. And when you do this, make sure that the throttle body linkage is on the driver's side of the engine. Then go ahead and install the original carburetor bolts that you had. All right, so now it's time to start hooking up the wiring. And I actually started the, with the wiring harness A and uh, started with the power wire. Go figure, right? Yeah. So uh, what I did was I ran a separate 16 gauge wire uh, for this. And this wire goes from from the wiring harness and it goes all the way back to the positive side of the battery. And the reason that they do this is uh, because they want to have constant battery power on uh, to keep the self-learning files and um, to keep everything like that. Um, what the Phytec does when it shuts down, it actually has like a 30 second delay where it saves all the self-learning files from your drive. It's not gonna drain your battery and it has a 25 amp fuse attached to it. Uh, what I did was I actually soldered this, um, soldered the 
two wires together. Then what you wanna do is run the orange wire back down uh, your frame and this hooks up to the fuel pump. Um, I'm gonna do a separate video on how I did my fuel pump. I did an inline fuel pump, ran new fuel lines, did AN fittings, all that good stuff. So I'll do a separate video about that, so check that out um, when it's ready. Side note, uh, what I did was I ran a wire from the fuel pump to the negative side of the battery. Um, fuel pumps, uh, the like number one reason that fuel pumps go bad is because of grounding issues. So um, make sure that you have a good ground on there. There's an old like, you know, 40 year old frame. So I decided I would run a wire. I was already running a wire to the fuel pump. So I just ran one back uh, and ran it to the negative side of the battery just to get a good ground. Then install the new Phytech coolant temperature sensor, the thing that reads the temperature of the engine. Install the black and yellow wire to the coolant sensor. One thing that I haven't figured out, I wanna still have my temperature read on my dash, like in my gauge cluster. I don't know if I wanna just splice in to the, the coolant uh, wires or if there's some other thing that I should do. If I should just splice it in, uh, then I'll do that. But um, if someone else has a brilliant idea, please let me know. The blue wire is only needed if you are not using the timing control, and I am using the timing control. That's why I bought the MSD Pro Billet distributor. So I terminated this wire under the dash. The yellow wire is for an electric fan, which I don't have yet. So I'm just gonna leave that wire under the dash for now until I get an electric fan. The black wire connects to the negative side of your coil, and the painless kit that I just installed had an extra connector, so I just used that. Um, but this is so that you can get a tack signal to the Phytech, so make sure to hook that up. The white wire is the 12 volt switch uh, for the Phytech, and so this is an important wire. And this is one that probably most people can't figure out where to get it from, and this is what I had trouble with. So I thought that I had gotten a 12 volt source um, that was in accessory on and crank on. It was one of the accessory wires from my painless kit. Uh, but it turned out that it wasn't crank on. So it was accessory on, but it wasn't crank on. So I ended up having to use the white and black wire from my electric choke, which is accessory on and crank on. Um, so if you have an electric choke, regardless of your wiring harness, try to use that for the 12 volt power on on the Phytech. Uh, if you don't have uh, the painless wiring harness, if you have an ori original harness, uh, Dirt Donk on ClassicBroncos.com says, on the original harness, you can use the green with the red stripe, that wire uh, that goes to the voltage regulator that's under the hood, or the red with the green stripe wire that goes to the ignition coil. I can't verify that, but we all trust Paul um, over at classicbroncos.com, and so you should too. Then what you wanna do is hook up the green and violet wire that goes to your two wire distributor. Again, I put the MSD Pro Billet in this, uh, and I had to lock it out, so check out that video of me locking it out. Then what you wanna do is put your handheld controller somewhere nifty and run the wires to that. Um, I was using this thing uh, while I was troubleshooting and all that, so I had it all over the place, and it's the great part about this. Then adjust the settings on the controller. I first went in and adjusted the, uh, the settings under initial setup. The only two things that I changed was I set my engine size to 302 and I set my cam to mild. When making these changes on the controller, you can only make one change at a time. Also what I did was I hooked up my C4 kickdown lever uh, using one of the old pieces from my original carburetor throttle body. Then I hooked up the throttle linkage and I had to get a couple parts. So right there I put in one of the new ball studs and then put the bushing in there to connect it and uh, it works uh, pretty good so far. 
So that is it. I told you it was so easy. It'll, it'll only take you a couple hours um, unless you make a bunch of mistakes like I did. But seriously, it is really easy. And I would start it up for you, but I think it's hilarious how long it actually took me to do this and how many times I would set up the camera and I'd be like, all right, today's the day. I'm going to start it up. And then it wouldn't start up. So, uh, but it runs beautifully. It sounds beautiful. Make sure to subscribe, make out, make sure to check out some other videos. Thank you again for watching and seriously subscribe so you can see the video where I actually get this thing up and running. I'll post it in a couple weeks. Thanks guys. Here we go. Ha <laughs> ha!